Hello everyone and welcome to Selwyn Chapel for Choral Evensong. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent and our sermon series on the Songs of the Bible concludes tonight very fittingly with a sermon on the Song of Songs as we continue to make our preparations for the events of Holy Week and Passion Tide to come. This is the final Choral Evensong of our Lent term here. It's time for us to give the small resident choir that has been singing all our services this term a very well-earned break. And we are all very grateful to them for all they've managed to do this term in some pretty challenging pandemic circumstances. It remains to be seen quite what our service pattern will look like next term. We'll have to wait for future announcements. But in the meantime, if you haven't already done so, do please consider subscribing to Selwyn Chapel on YouTube or on Facebook in order to make sure you stay up to date with our future plans. In the meantime, our good wishes and prayers for the remainder of Lent from all of us here. And thank you for joining us tonight. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Oh 
This reading is taken from Song of Songs, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. As a lily among brambles, so is my love among maidens. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among young men. With great delight I sat in his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house and his intention toward me was love. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. Oh, that his left hand were under my head, and his right hand embraced me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or wild does. Do not stir up or awaken love until it is ready. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands, behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. 
my beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for the winter is now past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the covert of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is lovely and your face is sweet. Catch us, the foxes, the little foxes, that ruin our vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine and I am his. He pastures his flock among the lilies. Until the day breathes and the shadows flee, turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the cleft of the mountains. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14, beginning at the 22nd verse. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, 
and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray, that you might not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Here ends the second reading. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Shir Hashirim, Canticum Canticorum, the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, the greatest of all the songs, a love song of enchanting erotic intimacy, King Solomon and the Shulamite woman. There are kisses, wine, a garden, pomegranates, spikenard, breasts like clusters of grapes, teeth like sheep, it's heady stuff. Yet, if the woman symbolises Israel and the man represents God, then staid theology lurks beneath the surface, suggesting an even greater love, the eternal love of God, who is love. Yes, Shir Hashirim, the greatest of all the songs. Yet, it's not really a song at all, more an ever-increasing collection of songs, loosely interconnected. The original the first accompanied singing has long been lost beyond regaining, but the lyrics remain to tantalize us, and translated into different languages, they've been sung to many different kinds of music. As we've already heard this evening, Palestrina set the Latin text to exquisite counterpoint. In the Anglican tradition, settings by Bairstow, Walton, Willen, Hadley and others are cherished introits and anthems. Other faiths have re-sung the song variously too. Some Jews still chant verses from it on the first night of Pesach, the Passover, to recall God's love for his chosen people as their exodus from slavery is remembered. That's what a love song sounds like. And maybe it evokes the Passover singing described all too briefly in our second lesson. As Mark tells us, Jesus and the disciples went out to the Mount of Olives after they had sung a hymn. The word hymn in the translation is unhelpful, though. The Greek text uses a verb, imnisantes, having hymned. That tells us something, but not enough, and I've often wondered about the singing that took place that solemn evening. Did they sing in unison or in harmony? Was the music antiphonal? Had they rehearsed? Did someone sing flat? Did anyone conduct? And, most importantly, which words were sung? They were probably words from one of the Paschal Psalms, most likely Psalm 118, which we heard earlier, The Lord is my strength and my song, sung as part of the Halal Shalem, the great prayer of praise at the start of the Passover. That seems most plausible. But I like to think that maybe, just maybe, that evening, like so many Jews since on the first night of Pesach, they sang some verses from the greatest of all the songs, that they hymned words from the Song of Songs before walking to Gethsemane. Somehow it seems fitting that an ancient song about love in a garden might have led them towards a very different kind of garden, where a very different kind of kiss was given and received. Over the centuries, the Shir Hashirim has indeed become many love songs, and love manifests itself in so many curious ways, especially during Passion Tide. Another Holy Week is approaching, and another Passover. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My beloved is gone down into his garden to gather lilies, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. 
Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And so we sing, and, in some ways, all our singing is always Shir Hashirim, Canticum Canticorum, the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, the greatest of all the songs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land, the fig tree forms its early fruit, the blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. Lord, in your providence, you set the stars to circle us, the sun to warm us and to define the seasons and to give us light. As we transition from winter to spring, may we not forget those who are struggling to leave the winter behind, those who are lonely, who are still anxious, bereaved or sick. May we follow in your example to shoulder our cross and to bear one another's burdens as we journey through this earthly life, neither ignoring one another's sufferings nor allowing them to bury us. Grant us the hope of a new season and better days to come through our Father who reigns eternal, in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let him lead me to the banqueting hall and let his banner over me be love. Lord, in your glorious Trinity, show us the way to love one another, you who is eternal love. Show us the way to live together and give us the grace to imitate your great banquet hall here on earth. Let us, like you, eat shoulder to shoulder, rich and poor, privileged and oppressed, from every gender, race, nation and creed. Lord, show your banner over us all, and give us patience, tolerance, kindness and fellowship, that we may be formed in your image. Bring us at the last to the eternal wedding feast with you, our Father, in the endless love of your Son and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The College Prayer O Lord, the resurrection and the life of them that believe, who didst enrich thy servant, George Augustus Selwyn, with thy manifold gifts of grace. Grant that all who serve thee here may be taught by his example to serve in their several callings to the honour of thy name, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. We gather our prayers as one community before God, in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.
Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.